What's up, YouTube? It's Ali Beans, and today we're going to be doing a review of the mechanical number pad called the Montex by Idobao. And so the reason I'm doing this review is I've been hooked on custom mechanical keyboards for a little over a year now. I've built, you know, a couple of dozen in that time span, starting with this bad boy, the Tofu 60. And you'll notice this is a 60% keyboard, and it doesn't have a number pad. And so that what that's what brought me on my journey to find a good custom mechanical number pad. And so I've tried the GK21, I've tried the launch pad, um, and, and they were good, but they, they weren't solid enough for me, right? They're good for their own purposes. But that's what brought me to the Montex mechanical number pad by Idobao. And I'm really loving the extra column here. And so we're going to be building this bad boy today as well as we're doing a review on it. So let's get right into the mechanical number pad called the Montex by Idobao review. And here we have everything that comes in the box of the Montex mechanical number pad. We've got the top case with integrated plate and that is CNC aluminum. And then we also have the CNC aluminum back plate along with the hot swappable PCB and those are the stock stabilizers on the PCB as well. I'm not going to be swapping those out. And there is plate foam included as you can see there. And as we zoom out, we'll see the rest of the items here. You can see everything from the coiled cable to the keycap puller to the screwdrivers to the spare screws, the feet for the bottom of the case. And they even included some extra hot swap sockets and diodes just in case you break anything off the back. But we've before we put all of this together, and to make sure we don't pop off any of those hot swap sockets, we're going to be testing the PCB first. And I recommend doing this on any custom mechanical keyboard build, whether it's a number pad all the way up to a full size. All right. So to the first thing that you always want to do when you get a new keyboard or a new mechanical number pad like we have here is test the PCB. And there's going to be a couple of things you need to test the PCB. First, you need an anti-static material. This is just what one of my keyboard PCBs came in, so I know it's anti-static. I've got the included screwdriver to open up the back of the mechanical number pad. And I have a USB-C USB cable to test. All right, and there actually is one very important piece that I forgot to mention in the tools you'll need, and that, of course, is a set of tweezers. And so what we're doing here is I have this dismantled. Here's the bottom of the case. Here's the PCB plugged in with the USB-C cable. Here is the case and just some of the foam that was in here, and I've got all my screws over here. And so what we're going to be doing is we're going to be pulling up a program, and then I'm just going to be testing right here making that connection making that connection right there to test so here we are inside of via i'll have this again linked to in the description below and if you don't see your number pad here you might just need to look at the top right and move those arrows to select the idobao montex what's that v2 number pad and then if you're using the uh, website version of via you'll just want to authorize device first once you got the number pad selected, go to key tester, enable the test matrix, and you can enable key sounds. And then you just take your tweezers and you touch them to the back of the hot swap sockets like I showed you before on the back end of the PCB. And you're actuating the switches here and this will test this for you. And you do this so that way when you're popping in a switch, if you pop out the hot swap socket at the back, Support with any keyboard maker is probably not going to help you, right? Because you physically broke the board by putting in the switch incorrectly or forcing it in. If you test beforehand and you find an issue, support's going to be a lot more understanding because you, one, you did the step that almost all of them recommend doing, and two, you know you, ha you didn't do it physically because that's the most co common way to break a PCB is by popping a hot swap socket, at least in a hot swap PCB, which this Montex mechanical number pad is. All right, now we're going to get to the actual build portion. So the switches we're going to be using in this are some Boba U4Ts, 62 grams. These are from Kerbal Keys. 
I'll have a link down in the description below for you. And they, they were purchased pre-lubed. Uh, just what I had laying around. Uh, so that's what's going to be going into this build. And I do like to do tactiles on my number pads. And so here's the main case. Here's the top of it. it is what's called an integrated plate. Uh, and that means it's actually part of the case here. So we're actually going to have to put in the PCB that I already have stabs lubed on. I already lubed these stabs that come with it to test out what those sound like. I did lube them heavily, though, because the tolerances were not too tight. Um, and then I have the included foam that comes in there. And we want to flip this upside down. Get it right in that hole there. That looks about right. And then we've got these screws here. Always make sure to use the included washers with the screws on the back of the PCB here, especially on a hot swap build. You don't want those screws shorting anything out. All right. And you can see there, one, two, three, four screws. USB-C is lined up. And then what I'm going to do here, before I insert a switch, I'm going to flip the PCB over and put my finger on the back of that hot swap socket, and I'm going to keep it there while I'm inserting the switch. And I'm going to do this every single time. And I'm going to insert the switch, make sure the pins are straight first, insert it slowly. If I feel any resistance or pushback, you take the switch out, make sure everything's lined up correctly, try again, all while still having your finger on the back of that hot swap socket so you don't pop one off. And then so this is the back plate that comes with it, aluminum anodized. But I upgraded to the acrylic back plate so that way some of that RGB can shine through the bottom if I wanted to. Because this is going to be a pretty minimalist build, so having a little bit of some flash I can turn on and off. And I'm not going to put any, and you can see here, that's about the only issue with the anodization. You see that scratch right here? There's a couple, and that's on the inside, but the rest of this is pretty good. Of course, I just slam those together. And then, just close that up there. If you do get the acrylic back plate, make sure to use these screws that came with that, because they're longer than the ones with the aluminum one. And of course, put on the rubber bumpins to make sure you're not scratching up your desk. Now that we've got that put together, let me find a keycap set to put on that and clean up everything around here. Well, I hope you guys like that B-roll because I worked really hard on it. Uh, let me know in the comments below, though, how you like it. Uh, here I am cycling through the RGB modes on the PCB, and it's the standard RGB modes you're going to get on any VIA PCB. And uh, you can cycle through the hues, and, of course, you can have the actions when you're pressing on different keys light up as well. With that said, let's get right into that sound test. And there you have it, folks. The Montex Mechanical Number Pad by Idobao is a great relatively budget option coming in around 70 to 80 bucks, depending on if you get it on sale. Full aluminum body. You've got RGB. You can get the acrylic back plate on the bottom if you want some of that RGB to bleed through to the bottom, which is what I've done. It has the extra column here which really opens up some more buttons for you besides just the number pad, which I love. I love using macros and navigational keys, especially on smaller keyboards. 
it sounds great, right? I didn't have to spend money on extra stabilizers. The stock stabs on here sound great with a little bit of BDZ on the wires and G205 on the housings. With that said, I mean, if this if this helps you make a decision, um, I always ask for the likes and the shares at the end of the video instead of the beginning. I don't understand why people ask that crap at the beginning. Like, I don't know if I like the video yet, right? So now, if I've actually helped you, I'd appreciate a like, maybe even hit that follow button or subscribe to be notified of when I put out new content. I'm Ollie Beans. I'll see you in the next video. Be good to each other.